There were three important new topics in this lecture. The relation between bond energy and interaction potential energies, the counting of energy modes for molecules, and the equipartition of energies. First, to calculate the bond energy of some group of atoms, we need to add up all the potential energies for each bonded pair of atoms. For each pair, we have to find the value of the potential energy at the distance that the atoms are actually separated by, that is, the bond length. Usually, we can make the approximation that we only add up the nearest neighbor pairs, but if we need a more accurate answer, we could also include next to nearest neighbors and next to next to nearest neighbors, and so on. If we include next to nearest neighbors, then we have to evaluate the potential energy at the distance between these more widely separated atoms. Generally, the potential energy goes towards zero at larger distances, so these longer bond lengths contribute a smaller amount to the bond energy than the nearest neighbors. Let's see how it works in a simple example. We have four atoms, and we want to find the bond energy when we just include nearest neighbors. If we draw in all the nearest neighbor bonds, we can see that there are four of these bonds. At equilibrium, the bond length corresponds to the value of R, where the potential is minimized, which is at 3.6 angstroms. Each of these bonds contributes a potential energy of minus 0.65 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. To get the bond energy, we just have to add up these energies, and since all the potential energies are the same, we can just multiply by 4 to find the bond energy is minus 2.6 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. If we wanted to go further and include next and nearest neighbors, then we would have to include the two bonds between the atoms that are diagonally opposite. From the geometry, we can see that the bond length along the diagonal is the square root of 2 times the nearest neighbor bond length, so for the next and nearest neighbors, we would calculate the potential energy at 5.1 angstroms and then multiply by 2. The next big topic was the counting of all the energy modes for molecules. The first step is quite simple. We need to find the total number of kinetic terms, which is just the number of spatial dimensions multiplied by the number of atoms. Since we live in a three-dimensional world, we just have to multiply the number of atoms by 3. Now we can group the kinetic energy terms into three types. Since the molecule can move as a single object in three dimensions, there are three kinetic terms for translational motion. Next, we need to determine how many rotational kinetic terms there are. For a single atom, there is no rotational kinetic energy at biological temperatures. For linear molecules, there are two types of rotations, since rotating around the long axis of the molecule is like rotating single atoms. Finally, for a nonlinear molecule, we can rotate around the three independent directions, so there are three kinetic energy terms for rotations in that case. Now we know the total number of kinetic energy terms, the number of translational kinetic terms, and the number of rotational kinetic terms. If the number of translational and rotational kinetic terms don't add up to the full total, then the remaining kinetic terms must be vibrational kinetic terms. A vibrational kinetic term means that there is some motion, like a mass on a spring, so that the vibrational kinetic energy is oscillating up and down. For energy to be conserved, we know that there must be a potential energy that goes up as the kinetic energy goes down. It is the force associated with the slope of the potential that is responsible for slowing the atom down or speeding it up. For every vibrational kinetic term that we find, there must be a corresponding potential energy term. For the final topic, the equipartition of energy, we were told that when we are in e equilibrium at some temperature T, then on average the energy is shared equally by all the kinetic and potential energy modes that the molecule has. We were also told that on average each mode has an energy given by one-half times Boltzmann's constant times the temperature. For vibrational potential modes, that, that energy is the average potential energy in addition to the bond energy which we have already accounted for. If we add up the average energies of all the modes, we get the total thermal energy. If we know the number of moles in our sample, then we can express the same information another way. The total thermal energy is the number of modes per molecule times the number of moles times Avogadro's number times the average energy per mode. You might remember that Avogadro's number times Boltzmann's constant is just the gas constant, so we can also rewrite this formula in terms of the gas constant. If you remember the equation we used for heat capacities at the beginning of the quarter, then you will see that by counting the number of modes per molecule, we have a way of calculating the heat capacity of a substance.